Now, the government says it's planning to introduce safety awareness tests for drone users and force them to register their devices. This comes after a recent spate of near misses with planes, including incidents at Heathrow and Edinburgh airports. Let's talk to an expert. Dominic Cross, the founder of Britain's first training academy for drone pilots, joins us now from the Cotswold Airport in Gloucestershire. Dominic, thanks for your time. I remember speaking to you a while ago when, when we got these figures about how many close uh, calls had been with planes and drones. Do you think these new rules are going to be an effective deterrent? I think there are starts. I mean, I suggested a year and a half ago that recommendation that uh, drones should be registered. Um, it gives the government a database, at least, of who owns what, and some sort of mandatory training that at least gives people enough information to understand the laws and how to operate them safely is going to be useful. My concern is really how they're going to police it. Um, it's, uh, it's a start, but it's a challenge to then subsequently make sure that when somebody does something wrong, uh, there is a, an authority responsible for uh, understanding how to go after that person and what they, what, they should be, uh, what they should be informed of as a result of the actions they've taken. And do you think um, it's going to be easy and how is it going to work? Maybe you can tell me uh, and inform us a little bit about people going to a till in a shop, they buy a drone, they might have to download an app or register online. Are they going to have to do that at the desk? When are they going to have to take a safety awareness course and how do they prove it? Do you have any insight into how that's going to work? Unfortunately not, Tom. The, uh, the news was released this morning at 9 o'clock, about a quarter of an hour ago, so it's still very early days. Um, I think the government of state or the Department for Transport has stated that they uh, are looking at this as something that they will implement at some point, and I don't think there's any time frame. Personally, I suspect that actually the point of sale is the right time to be, uh, to be looking to gather registration information. Um, the form of training that that takes subsequently is, is hard to tell at this stage. It could be something like an online course um, where people log in, enter some sort of details relating to the drone, complete a course and a questionnaire and a test, and subsequently come away with, uh, with a, uh, an acknowledgement of having understood the laws and, and gone through that process. But it's still very early days and it's hard to tell. I think the, you know, the one other thing to bear in mind, and that we all need to understand that uh, this is fine if somebody buys a drone through a reseller that is part of that process, but I think the, the government are going to face a challenge around how they manage people who build their own drones out of components, which is still perfectly doable. Um, you know, I've got a drone here today. This is a thing called a Mavic Pro. It's made by the world's biggest uh, drone manufacturer, DJI. It's a very small thing, um, and it's part of... Uh, an organization's uh, product set that is easier to track. Um, but ultimately, you know, not everyone buys something like this. A lot of people will go and build their own one out of components, and uh, it's a very difficult thing to trace. Uh, lots of drones um, are lighter than 250 grams, and they will not be subject to these new rules. Are they as dangerous to things like aircraft? Can they take photos of people without their consent? Can they be used to smuggle things into prisons? Stuff like that, that these drones that are under this weight limit are not going to adhere to the rules at all. It's highly unlikely, Tom, um, for the simple reason that the very, very light drones tend to not perform very well outdoors. Uh, there's a range of uh, smaller, lighter drones that have been launched over the last few years that are designed for indoor flying, for fun flying for children. Yeah, they can bounce off the wall and they won't do any harm. Um, to fly outdoors, where you've got a little bit of wind, um, not much, but we have a little bit today. Uh, you've got weather conditions that, it, that affect that, and you've got issues of range as well. And the very small light drones can't carry a great deal. So this uh, concern about light drones being used to take drugs into a prison, for example, would be a little bit of a challenge given that they, they just don't have the capacity to carry stuff. So I don't see it being a major issue. But having said that, the capabilities of this machine uh, are now very similar to the giant machines that we were using two years ago for professional work. This, you know, it has a 4K camera. It uh, has a long flight time, um, and it's a, it's a very capable little thing. So who knows what will happen as we go forward and, uh, and technology advances. Dominic, thanks very much for speaking to us this morning. Uh, a good step, but perhaps more to find out. We've got plenty more still to come your way here on Sunrise.